Hi, Dan. Hi. Thanks so much for joining I me in like conversation. I talk very slowly and <laughs> sort of calmly. Just to set the vibe, right? Exactly. Um, I'm so appreciative of your time and to be here talking about this movie. I couldn't be more thrilled to be talking to you. I use the app every single night of oh, my life. It's I how love I fall that. asleep. Yeah, I mean, your film, Good Grief, is so moving and speaks to so many important mental health themes and really what we do at Calm, which is just trying to bring more awareness overall to mental health, right? Mm -hmm. And so just off the bat, I'm curious, what inspired you to tell this story, especially to speak on grief, which is so complicated? It's so complicated. I, well, I guess I was experiencing it and realizing kind of, I, I, I haven't had a lot of grief loss in my life. Mm -hmm. And so, I was I was reconciling like what it all meant and I think sometimes and I've come to realize that this is a common question that people ask themselves in times of grief is am I doing it properly mm, right am I doing enough am I honoring the person enough by way of some kind of physical reaction or something and that felt like a really interesting conversation to have in a film um, and I wanted the movie to be about friendship so I was you know thinking about well what if what would it, what would the story look like if it was about how friends came together in a time of great tragedy and helped each other and and used the used the grief to kind of crack open their own lives and ask ask themselves well, what does it all mean and what do we mean to each other and do we need to do some work on ourselves and all of those things that I think happen after after a loss mm -hmm. so um, yeah it, it it just started with a question. And I think for me, I, I'm a writer, so mm. when I can't speak, I write. And when I don't know what to say, I write. And this is kind of the answer to a lot of the questions that I was having in my head that I just couldn't physically articulate, yeah. like, with my voice. What did you discover about grief through the writing? Like, did something surprise you as you were writing the script of, oh, this is maybe the answer that I was looking for in coping with my own grief? I guess it's just that there's comfort in it, and there can be comfort in it. And mm -hmm. I think everyone grieves in a different way, and it's such a sensitive topic for so many people. Yeah. Um, but I guess what I was trying to show is that, you know, at least for my character, for Mark, it's he he starts off by feeling so isolated and um, and conflicted about who he is and what he want, you know, what he wants to share with his friends and what he doesn't. The idea that we're a burden to our friends, I think, is something that a lot of us feel. Um, but ultimately, the truth will set you free, as cliche as it sounds. And getting to this point where these friendships f are forced to kind of have tough conversations in order to invest in the future of who they are for each other, it all, it all I don't know, it was just a, it was a very lush territory to explore. Um, but the comfort of grief, knowing that everyone is grieving something right. in some capacity. And we go through life, and I think we think a lot about ourselves or the immediacy of our situation, our loved ones. But it's not until you kind of ask some someone the question or in the case of the film, like Mark goes through the the journey, realizing character by character that everyone he encounters is grieving something. And it might not be it might not make you feel happy, but it'll make you feel comfort. And I think in times where we don't have happiness, comfort is the next best thing. Right. Well, I think so much for me in the past, grief is, well, for all of us, it's associated with losing something, mm -hmm. right? But we also don't think if we're losing something, we're also gaining something else as well, right? Mm -hmm. We're maybe gaining deeper relationships, a deeper truth, or just more fullness in life because mm -hmm. we're now experiencing such a wider range of emotions, right? Mm -hmm. And I mean, I feel like Mark in the film goes through that because he, at the beginning, starts as someone who doesn't want to really reveal all those truths, right? Mm -hmm. He's almost afraid to open up to the fullness of life. Yeah. I love this um, one line that you wrote, um, to avoid sadness is to also avoid love. Mm. Can you speak to that a little bit and how that ties into grief and just experiencing the fullness of life through grief? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think in the process of writing the movie, there were so many revelations that just kind of happened, you yeah. know? And I think you hope for those moments as a writer, you hope for those moments of, like, clarity. Um, and that was a line that really just, I was writing the scene and it just came. It almost felt earned because I was so close to these characters that by the end, I, you know, you struggle to figure out, okay, what's going to be the big message and what's going to be the big takeaway? And that line just just kind of happened. And I think it really summarizes the whole movie, which is that 
the farther you run away from feeling something, the farther you run away from the feeling of love. Because to have lost someone and to have, to feel sadness about that person is also an expression of love. It's an expression of how much they meant to you. Um, and of course, you know, Celia Imri delivering that line with just the most like subtly beautiful, beautiful. heartbreaking. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, there are moments, there were a few moments in the movie where I felt like certain lines happened and I was just grateful that they came into my head, you know? Yes. Yeah. Can you think of another line that came into your head that you're like, oh, oh gosh, wow. there's, a, there's, a, there's so many. I mean, the Thomas's line about, you know, it's never me, I think was something that I've experienced in my own life, asking that question. Mm -hmm. I think the, the ex, you know, um, Ruth's character on the Ferris wheel um, talks about the fact that sometimes we feel things that are inconvenient yeah, and that's okay. That kind of honesty amongst friends I think is something that I don't see a lot in movies and it was really special to be able to write these scenes and write this dialogue for friendships and not have it be on the sidelines to like a romantic focus. Right. You know, I think so, for me, my friendships mean the most to me. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been single for a while, so when you're, not, when, you, when you're not partnered, your friendships are your closest loves of your life outside of your family. Um, and it was just a really special experience to write a movie where, where friendship was given the space and the time and the, um, the mess to kind of be celebrated in, in all of its beauty and in all of its conflict. Mm -hmm. Well, what I saw from the movie is that those friendships and those relationships deepened because you guys went through yeah. something together, right? So it's weird how we um, typically want to avoid those emotions, but really we're just preventing ourselves from having fuller relationships and from developing that intimacy, Of right? course. I think honesty is is the hardest thing for people. In fact, it's we talk about it in the movie, walking down the street with with the character of Theo, and I'm talking about how honesty just doesn't spill out of a lot of people. And mm -hmm. he says, well, it should. Yes. And I believe that. You know, I think it's the hardest thing that people can do. There's so many, so many friends of mine fear conflict to the point where it actually cripples the friendship a little bit. Because when you're holding something inside or if you feel like someone is not there for you in a way that you want them to be or if they've said something or done something that, that doesn't feel right, if you don't have the ability to be honest about that, then you just end up calcifying that, that feeling of resentment or anger. And that's such a toxic thing. So honesty, I think, is the greatest path forward through friendship because it leaves no stone unturned. And sometimes it's uncomfortable. Yes. But it's a long-term investment in your life. Right. It's like short-term discomfort to prevent the long-term discomfort, Correct. right? Because yeah. that word when you said calcify has such a visual effect to it. Mm -hmm. You're like taking the emotion, you're stuffing it down, yeah. and now it just solidifies. I think about right? it like doctor's appointments. Yeah. You know, I'll see it on the calendar and I'll be like, oof, I'll think of any excuse to not go. Yeah. <laughs> and then you go and they're like, yep, you're great. And I'm like, right. oh, I feel excellent. Exactly. I feel way better than when I came in here. Yes. Um, you need, sometimes you need to do the hard stuff in order to feel really good. Yeah. I think it's Pema Chodron. Do you know Pema Chodron? She's an amazing Buddhist monk. I know that I know of, yeah. In incredible books and uh, incredible teachings and writings. And she says that an emotion should actually only take about 60 seconds to pass through the body when we are fully feeling it, processing it, and then releasing it, right? But the problem is that what? we don't want to be honest with it, right? So we push it down and it calcifies, and then it turns into this whole other subconscious issue that it wasn't before, right? Oh, I need to work on that. <laughs> don't we I need all? to work on that a lot. Yes. Well, I'm curious for you, you know, you say you, you're a user of the Calm app. Mm. How has mindfulness or just being more aware of your emotions and your mental health really helped you in processing some of these more difficult t um, times and experiences? I think being honest about the fact that you're working through it is yeah. the best part. I think I'm always kind of like in, in, in a state of active curiosity and active like self-examination. I think that's the beautiful thing about getting to write is you put yourself into all the different characters and by way of their dynamics, you're, you know, you're kind of like, it's a form of catharsis, it's a form of self-examination and, you know, um, and a form of kind of therapy in a way getting to know yourself, getting to ask yourself questions by way of the characters that mm. you might never ask yourself when you're not writing. Right. Um, I think it's so important to just, 
I, I don't know, chasing honesty, I think, is the big takeaway. Yeah. When you give me that example of writing, it's you becoming this empty vessel, right? To experience and empathize with this character, not mm -hmm. from your point of view, but from their point of view, right? Of course. Which really is mindfulness, this ability to kind of be the active witness and not be so consumed by self, by ego, mm -hmm. right? You have to detach from that to see, okay, who is this person? How are they mm -hmm. feeling? How are they affected by their emotions? And and we see that in ourselves too. Like we look at ourselves almost like a separate person. Yeah. And that's really helpful in us understanding and processing. Those and emotions. in the for in that to 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 add to that, as a writer, you grow so attached to your characters that it's really hard to have them fail. It's really right. hard to have them show flaws. Right. And yet, that's where the greatest you know, that's where the like marrow of the situation is. Yeah. It's in the flaws of your characters. And so to to make those active choices and say, okay, I'm going to have this person fail or I'm gonna have a huge hiccup in this person's life that they brought on themselves. Mm -hmm. It's in a way of kind of bringing it back to yourself. It, it's the acceptance of saying like, I will never be perfect. I have to let certain things happen. Right in order to move forward because right. otherwise you just get in in my case I'm fair I'm a perfectionist and I have very high standards for myself and I can be incredibly self-critical and and cruel at times mm -hmm. um, it's an active tr thing for me to like choose to be kind to myself and not come down as hard as I can be um, yeah. and I'm still working on it I'm so glad you shared that because I feel like almost everyone has that experience, right? Where we are our own worst critic and we can't see the good things that other people see, right? And I think it's because we're the ones that spend the most time in our heads, right? So we're well, constantly listening to that inner critic. Yeah, and like we think we know the truth. Yeah. But I don't think we do at times, you know? I think it's almost, a, you fortify any, any actual truth by giving yourself a narrative in advance. Mm if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so, you know, for me, putting a movie out, it's been, emotionally, it's been a really hard thing because I'm so critical of myself. Yeah. And I expect the worst. Yeah. And I need to change that. But that's life. That's sort of, it, it, it's, the, it's the blessing and the curse because if I didn't have it, granted, I, I, it's not to say you don't have to work on it, but it allows for certain truths to come out in the characters too. Right. So you think about who you are as a person and we always should be in an active state of trying to change ourselves. Mm -hmm. But I guess I try to harness some of that in a constructive way <laughs> to like tell stories about characters that feel real and, yeah. and um, you know, just try and, trying our best. Yeah. But putting a movie out into the world is incredibly vulnerable it and is. very bizarre. Especially one that you wrote, directed, and yeah, yeah. started. Yeah, I'm all over it. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, and I love the process of making it, but it's the putting it out into the world that's the scary part. Yes. I mean, that's also a mindfulness practice of just mm -hmm. surrendering and just letting go, right? Because at this point, your yeah. work is done and yeah. you just release it out, right? And other people's thoughts are not mine. Exactly. So. There's, um, it reminded me, when you're talking about just needing to be kinder to yourself, it reminded me of this moment in the film where Marcus is talking about the mind being like a muscle, mm. you know, and how you have to train it in a certain way when you lose mm. somebody because your mind still, like, thinks that this person mm -hmm. is there. How does that apply to your own life, too? Like, how are you training your mind, maybe with that perfectionist kind of I can't of remember where too? I read that kind of anal like an analogy or analysis. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's always stuck with me. It stuck with me through through breakups because I think at the time that was what I read was applying to heartbreak. Mm -hmm. That we can our brains kind of get trained to to live in the groove of heartbreak, and if we don't take the active steps to train our brains out of that heartbreak, yeah. we can live very easily in that place because it's where we've come to it's to to imprint. Like it's it's where the groove is. It's where we're most comfortable. Right, but if you think of it like a muscle, if you think about training your brain out of the habits that we have to, to feel you know, pity or to feel heartbreak, you know, not that that's a, a bad thing to feel. I think we should always kind of acknowledge our feelings as wholly as we possibly can. But with something like heartbreak, there does come a point where it stops serving you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I once, once had a teacher say it's about you know, feeling those things, but also being able to put them in a container because you can't let yeah. those emotions rule your life either, right? Yeah. 
yeah. So it's having that mindfulness to say, okay, I can feel this fully right now, but then I can also put it away in a container and save it for another time yeah. too. Right? There, there should come a point where I should try to not feel this way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, watching Mark's growth throughout the whole film is so beautiful and moving. And I think something that many people will resonate with just this idea of going from someone who's afraid to share the truth to someone who sees the value in it right yeah and was that something that you easily felt like you could connect to um just as the actor is like immersing yourself into that character yeah i mean i i am not an really an avoidant person okay so to write one and to put myself into the shoes of one was right. um was really enlightening and i think so many people are well i avoid in certain areas i think all of us do but you know, running from problems that they'll eventually catch up from you, running catch up to you, running mm -hmm. from sadness, running from you know grief or heartbreak or whatever. I mean, you have to live in it at some point. At least that was the big takeaway for me in in writing this character was he was so scared of feeling sadness and feeling loss. Mm -hmm. His mother died. He went straight into a relationship. It happens all the time. It happens to so many of us. Right. And yet, when do we give ourselves the moments to actually feel the things we need to? Yeah. And I think it can hinder our relationships. I know so many people that go from relationship to relationship to relationship, and that's absolutely fine. But there has to come a point where you know who you are independent of someone else, too. What is that like? So in, in the case of this film, it was about exploring when a death happens, when you didn't make the act of choice, but the choice just happened to you, what, what becomes of it? Mm. And I think he had that inclination to, to fall back into the habit of like distracting himself, and yet the circumstance of it all kind of forced him into a, into a level of truth that I don't think he was expecting. Right. And I think that rippled into the friendships too. I think they would never have had these conversations as friends and strengthened their friendship ultimately had had it all not happened so yeah i think that's the play on the good grief that's the that's the goodness in the grief yeah it um, reminds me of the saying that everything that happens to you is actually happening for you mm. in a way, right? And mm -hmm. how we can really see everything as cliche as it sounds, everything mm -hmm. does happen for a reason. There's a reason this person leaves and why this person comes in or why we get into a conflict with one person and then experience this fullness and this love with another, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I guess speaking a little bit to that, how do you feel like that resonates in the story? How everything was really aligned and as it should be? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a tricky thing, the idea of everything happening for a reason, because I think so much of us, so many of us don't want to he hear that. Of course. You know, I think it's very easy to say, like, uh, that. Yeah. And yet it is, It's that's life, ultimately, mm -hmm. is things happening for you. And how you navigate that is, is your choice. Um, I, I, yeah, I mean, I think... I always, aside from the friendships, I always saw this as like a little prince journey for, for the character of Mark, in that he's, he's exploring his life after his husband, and everyone he meets, whether it's you know the, a, a performance artist at an art party that he thinks one thing of, and then later you find out, oh, their parents have kind of cushioned this whole life for them, and they know that they're not very good. The sadness of that, there's yeah. grief in that, there's grief in... Um, and even, you know, the character of Theo saying he's at his job and he doesn't want to be there, but he stays for the money, that kind of vulnerability. To, to Thomas, who's lost someone, to, to Sophie, who, who quite literally needs to change really bad habits in her life and accept goodness and accept love in ways that she deserves. I guess it's like, for me, by the end of the movie, every character that we meet has shared a kind of grief with the character of Mark that ultimately gets him to a point where he feels secure enough to accept his husband mm. and to if if not if not um I'm searching for the word he, he can't if not forgive mm. then at least have closure with um his behavior yeah. And that takes strength too. Yeah, I think what, you know, that takeaway is that 
we have to lean on people and lean on our communities and our friendships yeah. and people to get through something like grief. Absolutely. Because that's how we can really process it and that's how we can move forward, right? Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, Dan. This thank was you. such an enlightening conversation. Oh my goodness, likewise. Yeah, I mean, the film is so beautiful. So thank congratulations, you. truly profound thank and moving much. work. Thank you. And don't forget to check out um, Good Grief, streaming on Netflix. Please check it out, it's such a great film.